So uh, I'd like to thank the other uh, speaker. I'd like to uh, join the other speakers to thank the organizer for giving me this opportunity to speak on this special occasion of uh, David's uh, 75th birthday. Uh, I first met him, uh, I can date it, in April of 1986. Uh, it was a, a conference, the last co uh, international conference on baryon number violation uh, because they didn't find one, and uh, the seventh workshop on ground unification. And I was actually uh, sort of helping, as a, uh, just finishing a second year in master course in Kyoto University. So I was in charge of collecting transparency. These days uh, we are using transparency from David Gross and Andy Strominger. And Andy, I'm not sure Andy is here, but. Uh, uh, so we went to a Kamioka tour uh, to look at the old Kamiokande, which they were just converting from a proton uh, decay experiment to neutrino uh, detector and a year later, one year later, they detected 17 neutrinos from the supernova. So those days, uh, it was still active mine, so we were riding. Actually, Andy and David was uh, riding in a car, uh, cart like this, and I somehow managed to get in. And <laughs> uh, that was uh, giving me opportunity to ask questions. And uh, I was at that time reading uh, the paper by uh, Candela Strominger, uh, 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 sorry, Candela Horowitz Strominger Witten. And uh, with youthful enthusiasm and naivety expressed my interest in deriving uh, standard model particle physics from string theory. And David says, well, we don't even know the metric of Karabiao. I still remember that. <laughs> and that really had a big impact on me. And actually, that, that, that was sort of my primary motivation to study uh, elliptic genus of K3, uh, which became my PhD thesis. And eventually, more recently, uh, led to the discovery of Matthew uh, group automorphism that uh, uh, Jeff will talk about, and also my work in topological string and uh, not invariant and all that. So I'd like to thank David for that. I got to know him more. Uh, sorry? <laughs> we still don't ha have that, ha we haven't done that homework yet. So, so I got to know David more after he moved to California because uh, I was uh, organizing the uh, strings workshop and also. Uh, actually, a year before, we had a, a string 79, and that David was just arriving his position as a director of ITP, and he gave a talk and then announced that the strings conference next year will be Santa Barbara, and they invited everybody. So I went to see him at the lunch and said, who is going to be the organizer? And David said, you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so glad that we did that, because that was a year uh, just, uh, just before that, uh, uh, Fuan Marzasena proposed the ADHCFT correspondence. So we had a great fun, and I wrote actually two papers with David, and that was a lot of fun, and I got involved in ITP afterwards. I would also want to say that uh, David has been a great supporter of uh, 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 the basic science in Asia, and I think people from India, uh, China, Korea have their own stories to tell, but in Japan, uh, 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 for example, when I was, was write, we were writing proposal for IP, uh, IPMU, uh, David actually gave me very sort of helpful advice, both scientific strategy and administration. And actually, when we passed the first stage, David wrote actually a very nice supportive letter, which was very helpful for us. And uh, uh, he also uh, uh, came various occasions. Uh, this is actually a dinner with the president of the University of Tokyo and to help us promote those activities. He has also been the on the advisory committee of Asian Winter School that we have been uh, running every winter uh, in India, China, Korea, and Japan. Uh, this, uh, just last month, we did that in Okinawa, where we will have the strings conference in two years. So, uh, so I'd like to discuss this swamp land question, which is the question of how to characterize an effective gravity theory that can emerge in a low energy approximation to consistent quantum theory, such as string theory. So, we well, stated in this way, a swamp, so any theory that do, do not do this, does not do this, is called as being in a swamp plant. So defined in that way, swamp, swamp, plant, swamp plant is a com complement of the landscape. But uh, of course, um, but, but so, so it's not a new, new it's just we're just com calling the complement of the landscape as swamp plant. But whereas uh, pe uh, people work on landscape, uh, sort of interested in constructing, actually, example of string vacua, here we are interested in understanding what are the conditions for which low energy effective theory cannot be a part of a, a consistent uh, UV-complete gravity theory. 
So in some sense, landscapers are interested in finding sufficient conditions, whereas here we are really talking about necessary conditions. So before I get into the main example of this uh, swampland criterion, uh, let me uh, tell you what has been known. And I'm not going to be give you an exhaustive list of all that is known, but some uh, illustrative example. So for example, there are some constraints on symmetries that low energy effective action theory of gravitational theory can have. So these are the conditions, for example, that is in a way that was formulated by actually Tom Banks and Nati Zeibel's paper, but there are many people who have worked on this uh, program. So, uh, so it is uh, generally believed that there are no global symmetry in gravitational theory and continuous sim gauge symmetries are compact <laughs> and the spectrum of electric and magnetic charge form complete set consistent with Dirac conservation. And, uh, so recently, uh, uh, Daniel Harrow has a very interesting uh, uh, interpretation of this property from holographic uh, point of view. So, yes. Well, so I think that, for example, there, there, there are uh, indications that uh, discrete symmetries are all also gauged. And uh, in fact, this is sort of part of uh, my work in progress with Daniel Harrow also. I'm not sure whether he was planning to mention that. Yeah. So, but uh, uh, the, the one, can, one can also uh, uh, make some argument that the discrete symmetry has to be also gauged. And, uh, uh, and also, so there is a stronger version of this type of statement called weak gravity conjecture, which I'm not going to talk about, but uh, Daniel may talk about. Uh, there are also constraints on the type of moduli space of low energy effective theory that uh, uh, one can obtain. Well, uh, to be precise, when we say uh, modular space, one has to worry about whether we are talking about space of uh, 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 stable vacuum or you are a semi-stable vacuum. And uh, the answer would be different. For example, uh, if you are a semi-stable vacuum, you can have, for example, action monodromy that they have considered. So, so the conditions are different. But you, so, for example, uh, if you consider a stable vacuum, then this is a kind of, for example, example of uh, conjecture that one can formulate uh, based on known example of string theory construction. So for example, uh, it's, uh, as, as far as we know, that all known example have uh, moduli space is non-compact and complete and has finite volume. And uh, what typically happens is that when uh, the moduli travel in the distance uh, larger than the Planck scale, a tower of low energy particles start appearing uh, with exponentially small masses. And uh, this actually is interesting because if you regard this as uh, sort of principle or, or that should be applied to any uh, uh, quantum theory of gravity, they almost like require you that uh, uh, the, uh, this theory should have extended object. Because for example, if you consider toroidal compactification, then the size of a torus <coughs> is, uh, is a moduli. But then you can ask, well, if the size of a torus become large, then, then you have a Kaluza-Klein mode. But when the size of a torus becomes small, how can uh, low energy effective theory break down? So what kind of particle can give rise to light particle when the size of the radius can, can be small? The only possibility, the conceivable possibility is that you can have some extended object. So this seems to uh, lead to an argument that the consistent quantum theory of gravity necessarily have to have uh, such extended object. Uh, and then the, the, the in all known examples, it seems like there are non non trivial one cycle with minimum length. And uh, so that's a, so the, those are the kind of things that you can deduce from known example. And in fact, uh, uh, just recently in the textbook that Sergio Cecotti wrote in section 4.9.1, he actually proved that these are all correct in a four dimensional supersymmetric uh, uh, theory with n equals three or higher. There are also uh, various interesting constraints of uh, uh, on topology of Calabrian spaces that have been emerging. So, so for example, this is a paper that I wrote with uh, 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 Christoph Keller a few years ago, where uh, we studied uh, a two-dimensional supersymmetric sigma model whose target space is a Calabrian manifold. So the horizontal axis is a, a total Hodge number, in this case, H11 plus H12. And uh, the vertical direction is a scaling dimension. So thi what this curve indicates is that by just requiring modular invariance, one can show that there has always be a non chiral operator whose conformal dimension is below this curve. 
So, so and then, then it's, it's, it's hard to see in this graph, but in fact, this curve actually eventually goes down towards zero. So that means that as the uh, topology of the space becomes more and more complicated, the Hongzhi number becomes increasingly large, then there appears increasingly light particle in the low energy spectrum. So that's also some indicates that there is something interesting go thing going happen when the uh, Hongzhi number increases. And also, I don't have time to tell you about, but uh, there is some kind of crossover uh, around Hodge number 500, the, the, there are several types of constraints that comes in that gives you this curve. And the type of constraint changes as the Hodge number becomes 500. And interestingly, the, the Calabria manifold with Hodge number 500 is also sort of a bound on the construction of non Calabria manifold. So in the last several years, what Itera and the collaborator have been doing very exhaustive uh, uh, such construction of uh, uh, Calabria manifold. And uh, so for example, so, so this is an example uh, of uh, a Hodge number H11 and H12 of uh, 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 elliptic Calabria uh, threefold. And this is for fourfold uh, that are used for F-theory compactification. And you see that there is some kind of uh, thinning out uh, and then Almost, I think that for elliptic Calabria, actually about 500 is a sharp cutoff. So, so there seems, seems to be some kind of thinning off of a possible choice of Calabria uh, around, around here. So that seems to be uh, sort of, uh, that can be, uh, and, then, and then there are some con conjecture that the elliptic Calabria typically give you the uh, uh, large uh, uh, Hodge number Calabria manifold. So, so there is, a, there is some kind of conjecture that one can formulate about the upper bound on the Hodge number of Calabria that would be I very interesting to, to see whether that's true or not. So, so those are the sort of some of the uh, uh, constraints that uh, uh, people are uh, exploring at various degrees of rigor. So some are actually uh, known to be almost true, like uh, uh, no, uh, no continuous global symmetry, and uh, the bound on uh, Hodge number uh, Etc. are still being explored. So today, uh, I would like to tell you about the uh, constraint on the energy momentum tensor, and in particular, certain types of uh, positive energy theorem for energy defined in some local domain in Calabria space. Not the Calabria space, excuse me, the, uh, the, the anti-digital space, actually. So, so here, I will consider, discuss this in the context of holography of quantum gravity, where consistent quantum gravity in ADS is equivalent to conformal field theory, on the boundary. And uh, in that case, we can use conformal field theory to put some constraint on property of gravity theory in the bulk. And uh, here I uh, uh, will focus on uh, uh, various inequalities that uh, people have derived uh, uh, using uh, information theoretical uh, 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 consideration. Uh, this is Shannon. And, uh, and then these uh, information theoretical inequalities are, are very useful uh, uh, to understand the uh, 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 efficiency of uh, information processing tasks. And so that's what, so sort of one of the uh, 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 reasons that Shannon considered uh, entropy and uh, their inequalities. So I will talk about uh, uh, two types of work that I have been doing in the last year or so. So first is a characteri characterization of gravitational effective field theory uh, using uh, such information inequalities. And which effective field theory can, have uh, can be coupled to gravity and have consistent UV completion. So this is a sort of original swamp plan question. And uh, this was discussed uh, in my paper with uh, uh, Jennifer Lin and Matilda Marcori and Bogdan Stoika uh, about a year ago. And then there is a work in progress that we are uh, finishing uh, paper of, uh, and hope that this will appear uh, soon. And then we will also di discuss reverse of the question of which conformal field theory have gravitational description with smooth uh, uh, geometry in ADS. So uh, let, let, in order to set the notation, let me just uh, uh, remind you that uh, when you have a, a, a subspace on the space of the space that conformal field theory is defined and call that as A, then you can define for each state in conformal field theory, you can define a density matrix row by taking trace over Hilbert space on the, of the complement of this domain. And then, so this is some density matrix, so you can define von Neumann entropy associated to that, and that is called entanglement entropy. 
and this en entropy measures the amount of entanglement between this region A and its complement, and that's why it's called entanglement entropy. And uh, Ryu Takayanagi formula says that you can actually compute this entanglement entropy by measuring the volume of minimum surface ending the uh, boundary of the domain. So, uh, so this gives you a way of computing uh, entanglement entropy uh, using gravity theory. And of course, entanglement entropy is uh, uh, also defined in the boundary CFT. So you can compute the same quantity in two different ways. And uh, then this, uh, in, in, so the, I, I will be focusing on inequalities that are satisfied by uh, uh, this object. And some inequalities are satisfied both by conformal field theory and by uh, low energy gravity theory. But there are actually interestingly some inequalities that are satisfied by any conformal field theory, but not always by gravity. And conversely, there are other inequalities that are satisfied by any gravity theory, but not always by conformal field theory. Ob obviously, there are also inequality not satisfied by uh, either of them, <laughs> but, uh, but I will not be interested in those inequalities. So, so if I draw this uh, Venn diagram, so these are in set of inequalities satisfied by conformal field theories. These are inequalities satisfied by uh, gravity theory. So, uh, so I'd be interested in so how to classify those things and what are the implications. So, so on this side, uh, you have uh, inequality satisfied by both gravity, the Ryu Takayanagi formula, and the conformal field theory. So strong subadditivity condition is an example of this. And this actually, in CF, uh, CFT side, is a very difficult identity to derive. But in gravity side, uh, it's a very simple, essentially the triangular inequality of Ryu Takayanagi uh, uh, surface. In fact, uh, 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 last fall, I was uh, sitting at the dining hall next, uh, next to uh, the uh, Elliot Reeve. And I had the pleasure of explaining him how you derive di this using uh, Ryu Takayanagi formula. And uh, uh, so on this side, actually, the first example that was known, uh, became known was uh, this monogamy of mutual information uh, uh, found by uh, uh, Patrick Hayden and uh, Matt Hendrick and uh, Alex Maroney. And uh, so this is an inequality that is uh, satisfied by Ryu Takayanagi formula, but is not always satisfied by conformal physics. So, so I will be talking about two aspects. One is to interpret the inequality of this type as positivity of quasi-local energy, namely the, so this will be the uh, positive energy theorem that has to be satisfied for, in order for gravity theory to be consistent. And then we will also be discussing, uh, I will also be discussing classification of holographic entropy uh, inequality on this side. So let me first uh, discuss positivity of uh, quasi-local energy. So, of course, entropy is closely related to the energy, and that's why the, posit uh, the inequality for entropy can be translated into energy condition. So, consider a surface, uh, uh, any surface sigma on a uh, 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 space-like surface. And uh, so here, in particular, I'd be interested in the case where the surface is sandwiched between Ryu Takayanagi surface and uh, the boundary. And then uh, I will define a... Uh, 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 some kind of energy associated with it. So next two uh, slides is basically review of uh, standard Hamilton-Jacobi uh, formulation and Hamiltonian formulation of uh, uh, ge computing generator for symmetry. So this is a sort of uh, just to introduce notation. So consider uh, the theory uh, in which low energy theory where you have a metric and the various matter field which I collectively write G. So even though I write G that includes various matter field in it. And suppose you have a Lagrangian density in it. So then equation motion, of course, is determined by the requirement that action is, is uh, uh, the uh, linear variation of the action is zero, which means that the variation of the Lagrangian density has to be total derivative, modulo equation motion. So that total, total derivative is obtained, uh, expressed by something theta, which is linear in del G. So you can think of this as one form in the space of field configuration. So if you have one form, you can compute, you can ma take one more derivative and define two form. And then we know that uh, this is related to the symplectic form of the space. And of course, when you are talking about gravitational theory or gauge theory, you have to worry about uh, dividing this into in the, the restricting it in physical subspace. 
and choosing gauge, etc. But uh, I'm not going to discuss detail of that. But so, so for example, uh, in a classical mechanics, uh, this can be p dot dq, whereas symplectic form is dp dq. So, so if you have uh, such symplectic form and theta, then you can define Hamiltonian associated to diffeomorphism, where essentially the, the current for the Hamiltonian is given by theta minus the Lagrangian. So for example, in the case of uh, standard uh, classical, finite dimensional classical system, the Hamiltonian is PQ dot minus Lagrangian. And so this is a sort of fancy version of that, where theta is something whose D is equal to symplectic form, and uh, you, are, you are subtracting Lagrangian density from this. So equation motion says that this is conserved. So, so, th so therefore, this is almost conserved and generate the diffeomorphism. But when you have a boundary, you have to add a boundary term to cancel a possible uh, contribution from boundary. And this is not, it is not always possible to find such boundary term. But in the situation that I will discuss today, uh, there are such boundary term. So in the gr gravity theory, for example, uh, sometimes you choose Gibbons Hawking terms. And so Gibbons Hawking term is an example of such boundary. So this is a sort of a, a, a standard Hamilton-Jacobi uh, formulation. Uh, now, uh, let's discuss the uh, uh, entropy side of the story. So again, I remind you that I'm considering a subspace of the space. And then suppose I have two states, vacuum state. And this can be any state, but here I choose the vacuum state and any state in conformal field theory. And for each one of them, I choose density matrix associated to this region A. And relative entropy is a measure to compare the uh, difference between the two. So, so it is defined in this way. So trace of rho log rho minus trace of rho log rho naught. It's not quite symmetric between rho and rho naught, but this is a good measure to uh, 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 show the difference between rho and rho naught. And when the rho and rho naught are infinitesimally close, uh, uh, this is given by uh, the Fischer metric. So uh, it turns out that if we use uh, uh, this type of Hamiltonian, then you can express uh, this uh, uh, relative entropy in a holographic fashion. So the idea is, uh, uh, like, uh, for in this type of our approach, is originally uh, due to Robert Ward and his collaborator, and we are applying uh, his technique uh, in this particular context. So, well, we always already have some kind of holographic expression for relative entropy, because the first term here is nothing but the minus of Ryu Takayanagi so, so, uh, type uh, uh, entanglement entropy. The entanglement entropy is that you can compute by using Ryu Takayanagi formula. And this can be uh, considered as expectation value of log of log naught evaluated for rho, which if you choose this uh, uh, domain A to be a disk-like domain, and if you choose uh, uh, rho naught as density matrix for the vacuum, then you can express this in terms of energy momentum tensor on the boundary, which has holographic expression. So both of them can always be already be holographically expressed, but in this case, you can also write it as a difference of this Hamiltonian. So you can write this as uh, uh, an in, uh, integral of Hamiltonian density integrated over, Ryu uh, uh, over the region between Ryu Takayanagi surface and boundary, and uh, 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 with an appropriate boundary term added to it. So this way, uh, we, we find that the relative entropy is equal to essentially some kind of energy associated to this local domain, which is generated particular, uh, particular uh, 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 diffeomorphism. So, so there is con some condition for the time-like vector field C in order for this to hold, but uh, uh, I'm, not going to, I'm not specifying it here. So anyway, so what we found is that this relative entropy can be expressed as a difference of the energy between the two states, the state corresponding to rho and state corresponding to the vacuum state. And since re relative entropy has to be positive, so this energy has to be positive. So this is a, a positive one of the positive energy conditions that I was uh, suggesting earlier. So namely that positive, uh, positivity of relative entropy directly leads to positivity of this type of vacuum energy. There are other positive energy conditions that you can derive also. 
relative entropy is not only relative entropy is positive, but it is also known to be monotonic, namely that if you increase the size of the domain, it's also increased. And it turns out that if I take a particular combination of derivative, then it can also be interpreted as some kind of Hamiltonian. So relative uh, positivity and the monotonicity of this relative entropy can now be interpreted as positivity of two different kind of Hamiltonian. So for example, this Hamiltonian is associated to time-like vector, purely unit normal, uh, the time-like vector unit normal to this surface sigma, uh, whose uh, length is uh, determined by the how the Ryu Takayanagi surface is foliated. And there is a similar definition for the other vector field too. Yes, please. Well, so they are, they, are dis so, so they are discussing this in the case when the rho and the rho naught are close to each other, right? Well, I think the proof, the, their derivation works only in that case. Yes. Yeah, it would be, be great if we, if we can extend this kind of construction in their case because their construction works for any domain, whereas my construction works only when the boundary is, is, of the, uh, is a disk, disk-like domain. And it's also not obvious to me that uh, their, const uh, their proof alone would uh, lead to the proof of positivity. Ah, okay, so from that, from that side. Yeah, so I, I do not know, but I don't think they have shown that uh, the, uh, so here we, what we are doing is complementary to what they are doing because here I'm comparing two states which are sort of non-perturbatively different. So, so which are, which are non-linear different. So one of the, so in, so I should have uh, said that earlier, but uh, in the paper that I wrote uh, uh, about a year ago with Jennifer and Mathilde and Boyd, uh, Bogdan, we are considering the case when the two states are actually infinitesimally close to each other. So close to what the situation that they are considering. And the main part of more recent work that I'm writing right now is that, uh, that uh, to extend this construction to the fully nonlinear regime where the two states, uh, rho and rho naught, are not close to it, not necessarily close to each other. So, so I don't think they have an they have, uh, argument in that situation. Oh, okay, so we should, well, at least in the paper, I didn't, I didn't see that. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so maybe we should discuss that. Okay, so, uh, so one more thing I wanted to say was that, uh, uh, so, so uh, given this expression, we can, if you actually take one more derivative, you can also express, uh, the second derivative of relative entropy in terms of actually integral of uh, energy density over uh, the Ryu Takayanagi surface. So, so if you have a family of Ryu Takayanagi surfaces, and if you know how to compute the relative entropy, then essentially uh, you, you have enough information to determine the energy density. So that's uh, we found is also quite interesting. So, so this was sort of a, a first half of this uh, story that you can interpret the uh, uh, positive energy condition uh, so as uh, coming from uh, positivity of relative e po positivity and uh, monotonicity of relative entropy. So for any uh, low energy gravity theories that don't satisfy uh, uh, this condition has to be in swamp land. Ah, so, so uh, uh, the well, so so, so for example, well, in a, you are you asking the uh, case when are you asking the case when uh, 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 so so for example, so so let me see. Uh, so you are asking the case when uh, which which for which you can define in the uh, 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 ADS uh, asymptotically ADS space. Uh, so let me see. Uh, so I had an answer to that question. Well, I, I think I had an answer to that question, but somehow jet lag hit me, so I'll try to answer that uh, uh, later. 
Uh, okay, so, uh, so now I'd like to uh, talk about uh, the, compli uh, the other side of the story, which is, that, uh, which is uh, uh, about uh, holographic uh, uh, entropy inequalities. So, so, so as I said, uh, uh, various entropy inequalities have been studied uh, in the general context of uh, uh, Shannon entropy and von Neumann entropy. And in those cases, typically, the number of inequality for a given number of domain uh, are expected to be infinite. So for example, in the case of classical Shannon entropy, it has been proven that there are infinite number of independent entropy inequality for three or more, uh, four or more regions. Whereas in the case of uh, quantum von Neumann entropy, uh, for more than three regions, a complete set of independent inequalities is not known. And, uh, but there are some numerical evidence that there are actually inf infinitely many entropy inequalities. Oh, that I do not know, actually. Uh, it turns out that it's an interesting point because for the, the, for in, in this context, uh, all the inequ uh, entropy inequality we found are all balanced. So, uh, so for holographic states, here are what we found. So we found some finite algorithm to classify all the uh, uh, entropy inequalities. And we find that uh, there are uh, finite many inequality in contrast to other cases uh, for fixed number of regions. And we have been able to classify all these inequalities. So how much more time do I have? 10 minutes. OK, so I think I can talk most of what I was planning to, to do. So, uh, so just, just to remind you that uh, uh, in the case uh, of strong subadditivity, this is a proof of strong subadditivity. So if you have region A, B, C, then the left-hand side uh, is given by some of these uh, 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 areas, whereas the right-hand side is some of these areas. And by triangular inequalities, uh, uh, some of these is bigger than some of these. So, so we are going to sort of formalize this type of procedure in the following way. The first, uh, I would like to discuss how to sort of describe uh, uh, holographic uh, uh, entanglement uh, uh, holographic inequality. So, we are going to describe that in terms of some kind of uh, a convex space, a convex cone. So, so if you have n regions, then you, you have two to the n minus one choice of subregions, the union and intersection of these regions. So for each one of them, you can compute uh, entanglement entropy. So that means that the entanglement entropy uh, gives you a point in this uh, space. But you can actually scale the metric in uh, 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 ADS by scaling the cosmological constant. So in fact, uh, 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 entanglement entropy make a vector. So, and if you have uh, two such vector, then you can take superposition of the uh, uh, vector by taking a tensor product, uh, the product of the space. So that means that uh, uh, the uh, entropy vector make a convex cone. So if you have inequality in the, uh, for the entropy, then it gives you some kind of phase. So the question of understanding uh, uh, entropy inequality is the same as understanding the geometric structure of this cone. <coughs> now we can actually uh, 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 transform the uh, computation of Ryu Takayanagi entropy uh, in a combinatorial program. So the way we do it is that uh, 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 start with this type of uh, 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 regions and then you can consider in, uh, intersection union intersection of all these regions and associated to Ryu Takayanagi surface. And if you do that, then Ryu Takayanagi surfaces uh, cut the bulk space into these connected subdomain. So, and then you assign a vertex for each of these domains and connect them by link. And the weight on the link is determined by the uh, area of the segment of the Ryu Takayanagi surface dual to it. So this gives you some kind of graph model. And then, you can compute uh, entropy by uh, considering the minimum cap. So for example, if you are interested in computing entropy for the domain A and B, then what you can do is co to consider all possible cups uh, between these, and then minimize it. And you can show that the uh, Ryu Takayanagi entropy formula is reproduced by this type of combinatorial calculation. So, uh, so this actually almost lead to the uh, uh, proof that the number of independent inequality is finite because uh, uh, 
any for for any uh, for for n regions, uh, any holographic entropy of n region can be described by a graph of two to the two to the n minus one vertices. So so that means that uh, the entropy and inequality that you can derive uh, for this type of graph model must be finite. So therefore, the cone is rational polyhedron, and the number of independent inequality is finite. But in practice, uh, uh, the, it may be computationally heavy. So this, this leads to, uh, basically, in principle, therefore, you can uh, put everything on the computer and try to discover entropy inequality by blindly searching through all these possibilities. But in practice, it is computationally heavy. So one can try to guess inequality and see whether that exhausts all the possibilities. But you can ask uh, when we can stop. How do we know that we have found all the uh, entropy inequalities? So here, make use of the fact that uh, uh, when you have a rational uh, convex polyhedron, then you can identify ext uh, extremal rays of the polyhedron. And if you, if you can show that all the external rays are realized holography, holo holographically, then you have exhausted all possible uh, uh, entropy inequalities. So, so this, this way we are able to show that for region 2, 3, 4, uh, we have found all the entropy inequalities, and they are exhausted by traditional inequalities such as uh, strong subadditivity plus a monogamy of mutual information. But it turns out that for uh, five or more regions, there are new types of inequalities. So, so in addition to this type of uh, traditional inequalities, you have new inequality for five regions. And in general, uh, for uh, odd regions, uh, we have generalization of uh, uh, monogamy of mutual information inequalities. So we have found that uh, 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 for two, three, four regions, uh, we now know the complete <coughs> set of holographic inequalities. But there are new type of inequalities uh, uh, for more regions. But for each number of regions, the number of inequality is finite. So, so anyway, so today uh, I talked about uh, how to characterize effective gravity theory that can emerge in a low energy approximation to a consistent quantum theory, such as string theory. So I, I talked about constraint on symmetry and constraint on moduli space and constraint on Calabria topology. And uh, I also talk about the positive energy theorems that you can derive uh, from uh, 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 entropy inequality. So happy birthday again, uh, David, and thank you very much for your guidance, uh, support, collaboration, and friendship. Thank you. Yes, Tom. It's, it's in, so I know ex, in no example the, this, the distance is infinite. Yes. Yes. But, but the way you said it, 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 it sounded like you were saying it has to be. Well, so, so, so it, 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 it would typically be the case if a uh, massless particle appear because that would uh, generally uh, 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 renormalize the. Uh, so, so you are talking about, uh, so non-compact, complete, and finite volume. So you are talking about non-compact part of this? No, so you gave an example. Yeah, so, so the ex example that I gave is like that. So, so you are talking about the case for, uh, 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 uh. So we Right. Uh, ah, okay, because, because in order to apply the second criteria in the case of uh, uh, torus, you need to know that R goes to zero limit is infinite distance. Is that, yeah, okay, yeah, so, so I, think, I think so that's why I have, we ha yes, yes, I agree. Yeah, that's an important point to me. Yes, please. Uh, 
Right, so, 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 so the positive energy theorem that I talked about uh, applies only for uh, a gravity theory which is asymptote to ADS. So, so I'm not sure whether this is applicable in the case that he was discussing. No, I, I, I don't think I, I, can, I can make a conclusion on that. Thank you.